Hello, Paul here, and I want to take you through some quick and easy photo editing done in Photoshop. So these are probably some things that you've overlooked and just a kind of a, a different way to work when it comes to uh, working on photos. Quite frankly, any sort of quick photo editing I need to make, I can use a sharpen tool or any one of these tools. I want to show you that a lot of these tools actually, if I select the sharpen tool, uh, they've been enhanced and uh, quite frankly I don't know if we let people know about it. So the sharpen tool typically we'd tell people not to use it because as I start to sharpen her eye look what it does it sort of like almost like rubs out the paper right so it's just not not good at all let's undo that. You just want to make sure this is checked to minimize, minimize the pixelation when protecting details so it's going to protect the detail of her eye but is not going to act like you know it's given her leprosy or anything so see how I'm sharpening see how it doesn't blow out the pixels around it and that's what it does so in this case I can just come in for some quick photo editing jump in and kind of sharpen up just some of those details like I did there just to make you know say her eyes pop and I can you know just enhance the curls a little bit as well all right so let's go beyond that and a lot of times we'll say you know even for a dark image or whatever we'll say okay well Brightness and contrast is what people will typically want to do. There's actually nothing wrong with using brightness and contrast. Sure, if you were using the legacy version, and we kept this in just to not tick off people who actually like it, but obviously brightening this photo and adding contrast doesn't really get me what I'm looking for right now, okay? When in actuality, if you turn off use legacy, I can brighten it, and still adjust the contrast and look at how much better it is. So again, we've enhanced a lot of these dialogues and anytime it says use legacy, so we've enhanced it and uh, in general should look a lot better. But rather than telling people to go through all these various uh, image adjustments, right, hue and saturation, all that fun stuff, I just encourage you and any new user to use camera raw filter. So going into camera raw filter, check this out. So, I just want to make this image better. Click Auto. It automatically does the adjustments that it needs to. And the photo is already pretty good, uh, but it increased the exposure, decreased the contrast to bring out some of her hair, uh, increased the shadow and the whites as well. So, it actually just makes it pop. I can go back to the default. And again, rather than me doing all those adjustments, look at all these different dialogues that I didn't have to open up one by one. Uh, notice how I can increase saturation as well. The difference between vibrance and saturation is saturation does it irregardless of the color or the intensity of that color. So it's going to say, hey, I'm going to make everything brighter. Okay, that's not what I want. I'd rather use vibrance because it's going to say, hey, the bright pixels, whatever's already pretty bright, I'm not going to brighten it anymore. Just bring out some of the color of the medium tones or the muted tones, and that's what's going on there. That's why it seems to protect it. So the gray, even though it looks pretty blue, there's it's a little dim. It gets a little more pop. Okay, so that's what I can add to some vibrance. Uh, going beyond that, if, if I want to get really particular, just to kind of show you real fast, you know, and this this goes for any sort of little um, any little edit that you need to do. Sure, you could use a rubber stamp or whatever, but I just encourage you to use the brush, as you can see right in here, spot removal, controlling it with uh, open and close brackets. I get that representation. I can click and it actually samples from another area. So I can pick this other area uh, and drag that around. So I'm not committed to that at all, like you are uh, you know, with the uh, rubber stamp tool. So I can do that, again, clicking again, it's gonna sample from that part. You get the idea, you know, and it obviously does a pretty good job. And I can continue to kind of edit this anywhere I want. Okay, just some of the blemishes is really all that I'm focused on. All right. Going on from there, and I can turn off that overlay. I can always adjust those points later on. I can add a little vignetting if I decide I want to. Actually, you know what I want to do? Is I want her eyes to pop some more. So I'm going to use a radial filter right here just on her pupils. So just dragging that out, maybe a little, extend it a little, turn off that overlay. And notice how I've just added or increased the exposure of that one area, you know, or the contrast or highlights. But I can make adjustments to just one little spot, okay? And I can do the same thing for the other side, just making her eyes pop a little bit kind of like that. And that's all I want to do is just kind of bring out her eyes some more uh, and just make them look just gorgeous because they are gorgeous eyes. 
And keep in mind, I can always jump in and adjust those at any time if I decide I wanted to, uh, say for instance, decrease or increase the saturation. So you get the idea. You can make make them pop. Do what you need to do. Uh, you know, simple image editing with Camera Raw. Click OK. You know, that's done. If I would have made this a smart object, it would have protected it. But all in all, that's what I want out of my image. And that's just some quick image editing tips in Photoshop. <laughs>